Good morning and welcome to our Meet Your Neighbor program. Uh, this is when we say move around and find a warm spot in the sanctuary. <laughs> so get people to sit in a new spot. No, honestly, I went back and checked. The temperature is 72 degrees. It's what it always is. It just happens to not be 100 degrees outside, so it feels cold. And yes, I did turn it up a couple of degrees just because. So if you start getting warm, again, move around. There's cooler spots and warmer spots. I want to encourage you to do that. Uh, Debbie Andrews is in Lubbock, Texas, uh, where it's probably a little bit warmer. Uh, she is celebrating her granddaughter Caitlin's graduation and acceptance to the Air Force Academy. So we want to sell, yeah, uh-huh. And thank you, Deb Mays, for um, filling in and, and bringing us your wonderful gift of music. So you'll notice in our hymnal or in our bulletin today that there are two hymn numbers for each one of the hymns. Uh, that is because we're using a tune that's different from the one that is with the words. So the first number will be the words to the hymn, and they will be on the screen as always, and so you don't need to do that. But if you like to sing, if you like to see the notes and kind of put all that together, the notes will be on this second number. So for instance, uh, your love, O oh God, has called us here. The words are on 647, and the tune will be to the hymn that's found on page 408. So just something to say you might want to know. Next week is Memorial Day Sunday, so please, uh, if you can wear your uniform, uh, we would encourage you to do so. We will be honoring our Memorial Day veterans and Memorial Day uh, celebrations on Sunday, so please do be part of that. Our blood drive is Sunday the 19th from 8 until noon, so it is helpful if we have reservations, if we know how many people are coming. It just helps the blood bank to, to, to know it is not a requirement. So if you wake up that morning and think, oh, I can do that, uh, please do. Uh, and if you do sign up and can't be here, of course, that's okay as well. But it does help us to know how many. Also, you notice I uh, did put my mask on again. It's, it's more just to remind folks that it is okay to wear your mask here. I found out again today we have a couple of more members that uh, took a vacation, uh, brought back some souvenirs, one of them being COVID. And so, again, uh, just be careful. Uh, faith, felt Faith mini Puppet Ministry will be June 10th and 11th, and so mark that on your calendars. Share that with your neighbors. Games Day is tomorrow at 1030. Again, please do come by. Give us a chance. If you've not ever participated in game days, it's a wonderful time to just kind of have fellowship. If you have a favorite game, chances are somebody's playing it here. At 11 o'clock, we have our baptism for Abigail Ray Cruz. That's the daughter of Melissa and A.J. Cruz. It's also uh, the granddaughter of Don Cruz. And so please uh, celebrate with them. Uh, you're welcome to come back for the 11 o'clock service if you'd like to be part of that baptism. Military honors for Dan Cretero will be out at Fort Sam the 27th. That's this Friday at 11 o'clock. I've called Reverend Missy Allen Jensen and talked to her about doing that service. Uh, they were very, very close, and Bob Allen was very, very close to the Criteros. And so um, there's some other things going on in my life as well, but I, I just thought it would be nice, and Missy did say she would do that service. And so that will be at 11 o'clock at Fort Sam. And then our district conference will be this afternoon at 4 o'clock here in the sanctuary. So I invite you to be part of that. If you have prayer concerns, joy celebrations, you can fill them out in one of these green cards, and you can hand it to one of the ushers. They'll bring it forward later on in the service. You can also text it to 210-817-7007, whether you're in-house or watching online. And just put in there uh, whatever your prayer concerns are. It'll pop up on my phone. Hopefully, I'll have a chance to see it. It's also a great way to show your presence here, either in worship service, if you're in the physical space, but also online by texting the word worship to 210-817-7007. And a lot of things you can do there. We also have our app that you can put on your phone if it's semi-smart. Uh, if you have a pre-smart phone, it's, it's a little bit more difficult, but you can also do it on your computer. And so there it is on the screen as well. So we encourage you to do that. You can also give online through that application. You can give online through tech through the 210-817-7007. Excuse me. 210-817-7007 number. You can text the word give and it'll walk you through the process. And there's another uh, opportunity in your worship bulletin that you can do that directly. Also, the number if you are going to listen to the worship service is there as well. 
So lots of things going on in the life of our congregation. I hope that you can find some place to fit in. If you would like to make this your church home, perhaps you're transferring from an existing faith community, uh, just come forward at the end of the service. Uh, fill out the brown card and back of the pew in front of you so that I can introduce you appropriately. Again, if you're online, you can just uh, let me know by texting. I would like to remember, I'd like information about joining the church, or you can put it in the comment section on our Facebook page if you're worshiping there. I think that's the announcements that I have uh, that I was prepared to share. So I would invite you to just take a moment, take a deep breath as Deb Mays leads us in this holy space and this holy time as she places her gift of music before God's throne. Please stand and join me in the responsive call to worship. We come together this day drawn by the light of God's love. In God's eternal kingdom, darkness and despair are vanquished. In God's eternal realm, peace and hope reign. Let all people praise God with their music and their voices. Let all the people praise God with their deeds of loving kindness. Praise be to God. Amen.
Our prayer of confession is responsive again this morning and can be found on page 893. Lord, we confess our day-to-day failure to be truly human. Lord, we confess to you. Lord, we confess that we often fail to love with all we have and are, often because we do not fully understand what loving means, often because we are afraid of risking ourselves. Lord, we confess to you. Lord, we cut ourselves off from each other, and we erect barriers of division. Lord, we confess to you. Lord, we confess that by silence and ill-considered word, we have built up walls of prejudice. Lord, we confess that by selfishness and lack of sympathy, we have stifled generosity and left little time for others. Hear these words of God's promise of grace. Holy Spirit, speak to us. Help us listen to your word of forgiveness, for we are very deaf. Come, fill this moment, and free us from sin. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Amen. And so now, as the gathered people of God, forgiven and reconciled with God, we are offering each other signs of God's forgiveness and reconciliation. God's peace be with you. God's peace. God's peace be with you. Please be seated. So I received a prayer concern uh, asking for prayers for Jan McDaniel, uh, a mother in, in, hospi- in the hospital. Uh, this request came from Daryl Taylor. If you have other requests, feel free to fill out the green slip and hand it to the ushers. Let us pray. Glorious God, creator of all things, judge of all people, we acknowledge and we lift up to you our manifold sins and wickedness. Forgive us, we pray, and help us to forgive one another. We look around the world and it seems like forgiveness is a rare commodity. We look at leaders of nations that believe their position gives them the authority to to invade, to maim, to kill and destroy. Where, O Lord, is your church? Where, O Lord, are your people? Help us to be the hands and feet and body of Christ. Help us to be the dwelling place of the Holy Spirit that we may live lives as an example of what it means to love the Lord our God with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our mind and all our strength and to love our neighbors as ourselves. Those that we agree with, those that we disagree with. We pray for your countries. We pray for the leaders of your people that they may recognize your presence, that they may feel your grace, that they may be examples of your compassion. We pray for your church. We're not exempt from struggles. We're not exempt from turmoils. We're not exempt from disagreements one with another. But Lord, Help us to treat each other with dignity and respect and grace and compassion. Take away the words of of hate, the words that tear down. Help us to act as if you dwell within us, around us, and beside us. We cannot imagine why a country would simply invade another country or why someone would drive several hours to tear down, to kill, and destroy. So help us to be instruments of your Holy Spirit that we may reach out to one another. We pray for those who respond to the evil in this world. We pray for our first responders. We pray for our peace officers. 
We pray for those that work on the front lines of our hospitals. We pray for those that experience the brokenness firsthand. That that brokenness not touch them in such a way that they can no longer draw from the well of your peace and your grace. We pray for one another. We pray for our congregation. We pray for those that are sick and injured. We pray for those that are shut-ins, that are lonely, that are dealing with addiction and mental illness. We pray for those that are hungry, and we pray for those that are content and complacent. We pray that we may comfort the afflicted and afflict the comfortable, that your kingdom may come here on earth and one day every head shall bow, every knee shall bend, and in every language on earth we may pray together the prayer that you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I invite you now to stand as you are able as we draw strength from this affirmation from Paul's letter to the church in Corinth, the letter to the church in Colossia, and the letter to us today. For this is the good news which we have received in which we stand and by which we are saved. Christ died for our sins, was buried, was raised on the third day and appeared first to the women, then to Peter and the twelve, and then to many faithful witnesses. We believe Jesus is the Christ, the anointed one of God, the firstborn of all creation, the firstborn from the dead, in whom all things hold together, in whom the fullness of God was pleased to dwell by the power of the Spirit. Christ is the head of the body, the church, and by the blood of the cross reconciles all things to God. Amen. congregation please be seated and John if you'd pray for us God of the mountains and the valleys of the dry places and oceans your voice speaks to us across creation the flowers and the trees sing of your majesty and the stars of the night speak of how much we still don't know as we offer gifts to you and speak our words of gratitude help us to hear your voice anew give us ears to hear faith to believe and determination to truly listen to how you would send us into a hurting world. In Christ we pray, amen.
couple of prayer concerns that I've received. Uh, Laquita is having surgery tomorrow, so please pray for her. And Isaiah Theuno, Thu, somebody help me on that one. Um, T H T R E U I N O. Uh, Trevino, there you go. Sorry, I'll have to do a spell it out and I can get it. Uh, so please keep, that's a five year old grandson of the roads. So, and then also receive prayer requests for a friend of a friend who has lost 25 family members in the last six months, including her son. Uh, so please keep that family in your prayers. Uh, John, if you'd pray for us. Please join in the prayer of illumination. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. Our reading today comes from the Gospel of John, the 14th chapter, verses 23 through 29. Listen for the word of our Lord as these scriptures are read and heard this morning. Jesus answered him, Those who love me will keep my word, and my Father will love them, and we will come to them and make our home with them. Whoever does not love me does not keep my word, and the word that you hear is not mine, but is from the Father who sent me. I have said these things to you while I am still with you, but the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. You heard me say to you, I'm going away, and I am coming to you. Want to come sit with me? I would love that. Ooh, we have one more week of school, and then it's summertime. <laughs> That's true. Good morning. So... When we just heard Pastor Jim read the gospel lesson, at the very beginning, it's Jesus talking to us, and he says, if you love me, you will keep my word. What does it mean to keep your word? Okay, that means like if you if you're if somebody tells you something privately, you don't tell other people. I don't think that's exactly that is true. What keeping your word means that's not exactly what he's talking about when he says it today. If I said to you, Jesus says, if you love me, you will mind me. Has anybody ever been told what does that mean, Jack? You don't know. <laughs> if I said, if you love me, you will obey me. Does anybody know what obey means? Oh, oh we got one. Okay, tell me. Where, where, you, your parents obey. where you listen and you do what they tell you, right? So Jesus is saying, hang on, if you love me, you will do what I tell you to do, right? It's a little bit like where mom or dad says, um, I, you need to, you need, or your teacher, you need to clean your room. And then you clean your room. You do what you were told, right? Or um, if somebody says you need to put the dishes away, you you need to put your laundry away. It needs to not live on your bed. That never happens, does it? Yeah. So, um, so Jesus says, if you love me, I want you to do what I've told you to do. Now. What did Jesus tell us to do? What did Jesus tell us? All throughout the Bible, there's some things. What's something Jesus told us to do? Did he tell us to love our neighbor? He did. Then we said, who's our neighbor? And what did he say? <laughs> That's right. And we were like, dang, even the people I don't like are my neighbor? And he was like, yeah, especially those people. How about God? Yep. He said... You honor God by taking care of, and then he told us what, we should feed people, we should clothe people, we should be kind to people who are strangers in our land, we should visit people who can't get out, all those things. And that he's, he's about to say, I gotta go, and I'm gonna make sure, this is like when mom and dad sometimes go out and they give the babysitter and you all the instructions, right? And then they leave, 
And when they leave, what do you want? What do they want you to do? Listen. To do what you were told to do, right? Listen. Same thing with Jesus. He's like, uh, I'm not going to be able to be here with you all this time. So I want to make sure you understand all these things I told you to do. You better do it. God. Now, the crazy thing about God is God keeps God. giving us chances to, to make up and to do better. God. Every morning, we get a sunrise. And you know what the sunrise says? God. It says, new day, new chance, God. new time to be able to make good choices. Will you pray with me? Hands together, head bowed, eyes closed. Dear God, first, thanks for lots of chances. And then, God, thanks for good instructions. Help me to mind those instructions, especially when it's hard. Thanks for Jesus. Amen. You may rejoin your families. <laughs> John's handing out blankets. If you need one, just raise your hand. So in reading this scripture passage, and, and I have preached on parts of this scripture passage many, many times. It's one of my favorite passages to use for funerals. But I, I must confess, I've never thought about it, uh, at least this very first part. Jesus answered him, those who love me will keep my word and my father will love them and we will come to them and make our home with them. That part I've gotten. Did you catch it though? Jesus answered him. Who? Wait, what? 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 This is an answer to a question? What's the question? So we look back up. Judas, not Iscariot, it says in the Bible, Judas, not Iscariot, said to him, Lord, how is it that you will reveal yourself to us and not to the world? How is it that you will reveal yourself to us and not to the world? Jesus answered him, those who love me will keep my word and my father will love them and we will come to them and make our home with them. Jesus says that he will dwell with those who love and keep his word, keep his commandments. Verse 23. Now, in 14.2, which is back where I usually start for funerals, do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. Now let's put those back together, all right? In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. Those who love me will keep my word, and my Father will love them, and we will come to them and dwell with them. Now, when I preach funerals, I talk about there are many dwelling places, and I have always imagined heavenly places, all kinds of heavenly places, big ones, small ones, fat ones, skinny ones, tall ones, short ones, all kinds of heavenly places that we can go and that our loved ones can go But I never really thought about it. And, and, and I will continue to preach of the heavenly places, the heavenly dwelling places. But Jesus says, we will dwell with you. We will dwell with you. Those who love me will keep my word, and my Father will love them, and we will come to them and make our home with them. That's a lot of dwelling places, isn't it? That Jesus comes and takes on our flesh. Now jump with me back to Christmas. The Word made flesh, the very beginning of John. Jesus comes and takes on our flesh and dwells with us, and us 
with him. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, Jesus promises to be with us, to dwell with us right now and in the future. Jesus promises to come to us. Now, Bishop Williman says that there's nothing about the Christian faith that is self-derived. It is a gift. It is something that is given to us. Jesus comes to us, dwells with us through the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, Kierkegaard, the famous Christian philosopher, said that the Christian faith does not arise from any human heart. We are not self-made Christians. We may be self-made people. Now, there are many other faiths that arise from discovering, that arise from some sort of aha moment. But what Williman is saying, and what I believe the writer of the Gospel of John is saying is, that Christian faith is not like Einstein's theory of relativity. It's not like discovering some planet someplace and going, Eureka, aha, look what I found. It's not like discovering something. It is a gift that is given to us and that we receive and that we accept. It's not one that is genetically, intrinsically born into us, it is not a gift that we get simply from biology or from genetics. It is not something that occurs after long periods of meditation in the deep in the woods or under one specific tree or by one specific action. It's not one that comes from some discovery but it comes from experiencing God dwelling with us. It comes as a gift. It's not from our wounds. It's not from an ecstatic moment that we've had, good or bad. It comes from God's love. Jesus loves us. Jesus has always loved us. And Jesus continues to love us. It is by that gift of God's love, that self-revealing of God through the power of the Holy Spirit, that unveiling of God through the power of the Holy Spirit, that we are not left to our own devices. The Spirit keeps making the way for Christ to be known to us, to dwell with us, to abide with us. The Word continues to become flesh and dwell among us, as we learned in John 1, 14. Continues to live among us, to be present with us, as is restated again and again, most recently in John 14, 23. Jesus is busily preparing dwelling places. At the same time Jesus is preparing eternal dwelling places, Jesus is preparing contemporary dwelling places here and now dwelling places. If you've been following along in our readings and if you've read the Acts passages for this week, Paul goes to preach and there is a lady in the synagogue in the congregation named Lydia. And Lydia hears the good news and she recognizes God's dwelling among her. Lydia was ready to receive, ready to hear. She was open to recognize the gift of God's love. And God used Paul where God was already dwelling through the power of the Holy Spirit 
to deliver that message. The Holy Spirit had prepared Lydia to hear the message and to be the disciple, to be the dwelling place that Paul was, that you are, that I am. Walter Brueggemann says that we can learn two things about Lydia. First, she listened to what Paul was saying. She listened to things that were new to her, even though she was already a worshiper of God. Paul was bringing them in a new way. She listened and consequently was baptized and leaned into and embraced that new life, that gift from God. Second thing we can learn from the Acts passage is she responded with hospitality in verse 15. Perhaps everyone in the congregation wanted to host the guest preacher, take him out to lunch, invite him over to the house, we don't know. But we do know that preaching evoked hospitality. That through this message of Paul, Lydia responded with hospitality. And it was crucial to her recognizing the gift. It was crucial to establishing the early church. Check out Romans 12, 13. We're not told much more than that. But just imagine with me for just a moment that when we are baptized, when we baptize Abby at 11 o'clock, she is invited and a way is prepared for her. She is being prepared for Christ to dwell within her. That we, when we come together and we hear the word proclaimed and read and heard, that we are invited to receive new teachings given to us through Jesus. We are invited to be like Jesus, the body of Christ, the church. Lydia, after hearing the message, was not troubled. Indeed, it tells us in verse 17 that she had an open heart. Lydia, like Jesus, found that the ruler of this age had no power over her. In her baptism, she found freedom to be God's child. Lydia, like Jesus, was recruited for the commandment of love. It only mentions her immediate act of hospitality. But we can imagine that that hospitality continued for as long as she was willing to be the dwelling place of God. So what are the marks of the church, the body of Christ, What do we learn from the Holy Spirit dwelling in Lydia? What do we learn from the Holy Spirit dwelling in us? Well, in verse 23 today, Jesus answered him, Those who love me will keep my word, and my Father will love them. The message of love that we are reminded to love the Lord our God with all our heart, with all our mind, with all our soul and all our strength, and to love our neighbor as ourselves, to love our neighbor as much as we love ourselves, and to not just stop with our neighbor, but to love those who are difficult to love. Those who love me will keep my word, and my Father will love them, and we will come to them and make our home with them. Whoever does not love me and does not keep my words, and the word that you hear is not mine, but is from the Father who sent me. 
Then let's go down to verse 26. But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I've said to you. So what does it mean for Christ to dwell within us? It means we continue to learn. We continue to grow. We continue to be open to new ideas and to remember and to stay connected and to hear God's word read and heard and lived out. Verse 27. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. Peace. Peace. Not just a peace that's the absence of war. Not just a peace that is an end of some psychological tension. Not just a peace that is tied in with some sentimental feeling of well-being, but a salvation peace, an all-encompassing reality that we're not troubled by this ideology of maybe the right or the left, a freedom that we are freed from the powers of this present age, a belief that we are indeed capable of loving one another, loving as we love ourselves, and even loving our enemies. As I was preparing the sermon, I got through and I thought, okay, what personal story can I put in here? How can I relate this to them personally? And there were a lot of, of images, but nothing really came to me. And then I got a text message from my daughter, and it was a video. It was a video of my daughter and my two granddaughters, Skylar and Holland, making ferry boats with leaves and floating them in the dog's dish. You don't think they got worries? Deb Andrews is celebrating the graduation of her granddaughter as she prepares to enter the Air Force Academy in Colorado. How many graduates do you think out there are wondering what they're going to do now? How many high school graduates are wondering if they're going to make the right choice for some study or some major that's going to affect the rest of their life? How many folks out there are worried about their retirement or their health or the fact that you can see the back of my head now after I got my hair cut? I don't like that. Ferry boat. Ferry boats, the ability to believe that God dwells among us, to practice hospitality, to practice love, to love the Lord our God with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our mind and all our strength, and to love our neighbor as ourselves, day in, day out. The message today is Jesus is with us. Jesus is here. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and take you to myself so that where I am, there you may be also. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me.
peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. I am going away, and I am coming to you. I am going away, and I am coming to you. The Holy Spirit is with us. Christ dwells among us, with you, day in, day out. And we continue to learn and to grow as the Holy Spirit reveals the full meaning of God's will and God's world, the kingdom of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. If you'd like to make this your church home, I invite you to let us know. If you're here in the sanctuary, you can fill out the brown card and back to the pew in front of you. If you're online, simply text it to me, and I will get back with you as soon as I can. But let us know. If you want to come forward, you may come forward as we sing, All Who Love and Serve Your City, number 433. Let us stand and sing. sufficient and the communion of the saints go with you as you go forth from this place empowered by the Holy Spirit for Christ dwells with you peace be with you amen, amen.